Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy adventure film named The Portable Door. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young man named Paul having an important interview today. He rushed anxiously to his destination, encountering numerous troubles along the way, including a strange old man trying to strike up a conversation, but he ignored his dying greetings. Finally, he joined the queue for the interview, only for his scarf to be snatched away by a dog. Paul chased the messy dog into a small alley and through a door, finding it interesting that the place was also hiring. On a sofa sat a charming lady, seemingly waiting for her interview. Paul decided to sit next to her and watch the company introduction playing on the TV. After watching for a while, Paul could only gather that the company was called Wells, but he had no idea what kind of business they were in. Suddenly, laughter echoed through the room, followed by the appearance of a man and woman. A bearded man in a suit named Beardy approached the office and asked Paul to follow him, surprisingly knowing his name. Paul hurriedly followed him to the second floor, where the boss, Wells, and board members were seated. He began an interview in confusion and ended it just as bewildered. Dejected, Paul left, feeling like he had blown his chance. Fortunately, he found the messy dog was nearby, still holding his scarf, but his bad luck was far from over. Upon returning home, Paul learned that his best friend and roommate planned to move out, meaning he would have to bear the entire rent. As the two argued incessantly, a strange claw pushed open the mail slot and tossed a letter into the room. The letter, surprisingly, was from Wells' company, stating that Paul had passed the interview. Overwhelmed with joy, he failed to notice that he had never provided his address, but the company somehow knew where he lived. The next day, as soon as the alarm clock rang, Paul woke up from his pig snoring and quickly got ready for work. Later, he entered the company with an excited heart. A sexy receptionist sat in the lobby. After Paul explained his purpose, she immediately notified Beardy from yesterday. He led Paul to the second floor, explaining that Wells was a law firm as they walked. After that, they entered a busy work area, and Paul observed the people in different offices, unable to discern what they were working on. Beardy also made a strange request. No computers were allowed in the company. He then pushed Paul into the innermost office, where he saw Sophie, the charming lady from yesterday. The two of them were the interns hired recently in the entire company. Beardy said that someone would come to arrange their work and then left the office. Because of his nervousness, Paul kept talking non-stop. Just as Sophie was about to interrupt him, he suddenly jumped onto a chair and pointed ahead. An unidentified creature darted into the shadows, and when Paul tried to get a closer look, a regular mouse emerged from behind a cabinet. Soon after, the receptionist opened the door and handed several maps to Paul, asking him to circle the locations containing Box 8 deposits. Sophie was to help him as well. The two spent the entire morning examining maps until lunchtime. As they went downstairs, wondering what to eat, they were intercepted by their superior from the board of directors. She led the two to a park, and suddenly, a canister was thrown out of the sewer. The superior calmly picked it up to examine it, and then directed the two to look ahead. She said that the lady on the bench was reading atonement, and when she read about Cecilia jumping into the fountain, Sophie needed to signal the superior. Sophie couldn't help but ask how she can know where she's at in the book. The superior then told her to stand in the bushes, and then sat down on a bench opposite the woman. Sophie did as she was told, dumbfounded, but miraculously discovered that she could see from the woman's perspective. When the woman read about Cecilia jumping into the fountain, Sophie immediately raised her hand to signal. The superior saw it and suddenly moved her finger, causing the man sitting by the fountain to suddenly fall into the water. The lady on the bench hurried over to check, and a romantic relationship began. The superior praised Sophie for doing a good job, explaining that the man's parents had spent a lot of money to arrange for their son to marry the lady on the bench. With this incident, the two would undoubtedly believe it was destiny. Paul couldn't remain calm, asking what on earth is going on. The superior explained that Sophie was a seer that could foresee the future. The superior finally began to explain the company's business to Paul. It turned out that most of Wells' employees were capable of magic. They were practical wizards who used their magic to serve the clients for money. Although Sophie was an intern, she was on a completely different level from Paul. The superior only took Sophie with her, leaving Paul to return to the attic office. Paul took out a sandwich to eat, brushing off the breadcrumbs from the map. Unexpectedly, he suddenly felt a strange sensation in his palm. As he held his hand above the map, he seemed to sense changes in the paper. Just as he was extremely puzzled, Mr. Wells entered the office. 
He asked Paul to look straight ahead and continue feeling the map with his palm. A current hit Paul's fingers, pointing to the location containing bauxite deposits. It seemed that Paul also had some supernatural abilities that could make him detect where the targeted objects were located. Wells pulled him out of the attic and took him to his office. He said the company was at a critical stage, fighting for its survival, and needed a diviner to help everyone get back on track. Apparently, Paul was that diviner. In order to get closer to him, Wells brought up Paul's irresponsible father. He empathized with Paul, complaining about his own father, who forced him to sign a contract selling his soul and being controlled forever when he was very young. Both of them had suffered under their father's oppression. Wells understood that Paul wanted to prove himself and seize this opportunity. Wells asked Paul to help find something, a portable door. Paul had no idea what the door looked like but was shown out of the office by Wells. He could only search for the door and the company one by one until he was interrupted by a curly-haired witch from the board of directors. She enthusiastically greeted him, but Paul noticed that her hair was moving chaotically, even forming several letters as if they were delivering some warnings. Paul returned home with questions and rested, only to be awakened in the middle of the night by his supervisor. His ability was to control dreams, which meant that Paul was still in a dream. He wanted to know the reason why Wells had hired Paul. However, Wells had warned Paul to keep the loss of the portable door a secret. Seeing that he wouldn't confess, he used magic to bend Paul's leg, causing all his teeth to fall out and his ears to grow enormous. Although this was happening in a dream, Paul was still terrified and had no choice but to confess to him. After obtaining the information he wanted, he prepared to leave, saying that the portable door could open the Bank of the Dead. The next day, Paul continued searching in the company and saw the words Bank of the Dead on the floor. Following the arrow's direction, he proceeded to a dimly lit basement. On the roll-up door, it was written that only fairies could enter. Paul carefully opened the door, but inside was just an ordinary storeroom. Before he could inspect it thoroughly, he was chased out by Beardy. Paul didn't give up easily and returned to the storeroom the following day. He quickly discovered that the wall inside was an illusion. He went through the wall and entered another space, filled with strange specimens and miscellaneous items. Among them, the weirdest one was a stapler, which surprisingly hit a goblin creature. Paul had never imagined that such creatures truly existed. The creature pointed him in a direction, and Paul gathered his courage to move forward. Using his divination ability, he successfully found the portable door. Curious, Paul entered through the door. However, the moment he closed it, the portable door turned into a towel, and voices could be heard from inside the office. It seemed Wells was talking about Paul's father and the disappearance of the company's former boss. Paul continued eavesdropping and happened to discover the company's top secrets. In fact, Wells was trafficking human souls and used the company's employees as the test subjects. Once they signed a soul contract, they would completely lose their sense of self, and Wells' next target was Sophie. The superior and others were unaware of this plan. Paul realized that he couldn't hand the portal door over to them in order to stop Wells' evil plan. He picked up the towel and read the instructions on it. Apparently, by reciting a spell and the destination, one could teleport there. Paul was transported to a supermarket freezer. He picked up a towel and returned to the company, rushing to the attic office. He tore off Sophie's badge and threw it away, as it had a special surveillance device on it. He explained the boss's conspiracy to her, then took out the towel to demonstrate the use of the portal door. Paul muttered a spell to open the door, but found himself in a strange space with countless portable doors and heard unfamiliar voices. He quickly pulled Suffy out, realizing he had made a mistake that he had to state the destination before opening the door. He tried again, this time muttering the name of the apartment, and they successfully arrived at the correct location. Sophie was thrilled and couldn't help but drag Paul around, teleporting non-stop. The two went to Egypt and Alaska, surfed together in Jamaica, and even witnessed the Aurora together. They took advantage of work breaks to travel nearly the entire world, and love blossomed between them. However, Sophie knew she had signed a soul contract and wasn't sure if her feelings for Paul were genuine. Therefore, they planned to find and destroy the contract. The two returned to the company through the portable door, and Paul had just hidden the towel when Beardy walked in. He noticed their strange attire and the sand on the ground, understanding what had happened. Beardy urged Paul to return what he had taken and leave the company forever, or else he would face dire consequences. However, Paul wanted to find Sophie's contract before leaving. After nightfall, the two secretly returned to the company, but the portable door didn't follow Paul's instructions to enter Wells' office. Instead, it took them to a printer area. 
The printers were operating on their own, printing contracts for gym memberships, rental agreements, and more. It turns out, Wells had secretly added sole agreements to these everyday contracts, causing people to unwittingly sign the contract selling their souls. Afterward, they carefully followed some noise from a distance, finding a goblin eating pizza. Paul opened the portable door, intending to go to Wells' office, but the door disobeyed his command and sent them to a dark basement with Bank of the Dead marked on the floor. Selfie recalled the terms of the contracts, knowing that all souls were permanently stored in the death bank. They cautiously searched for a way out, only to stumble upon a group of goblins. They fled in panic and ended up behind a door where Beardy appeared to flex his messy beard. He turned out to be a shape-shifting goblin and the leader of the little monsters. Beardy angrily scolded them for not heeding his warnings and insisted on coming to their doom. As he spoke, Wells emerged from the shadows. He ordered Beardy to get lost with his beard and minions, but Beardy refused, claiming that without Goblin's assistance, the wizards were useless. As they argued, Paul and Suffy took the opportunity to open the portable door and escape for their shitty lives. However, they overlooked the rule, whoever closed the door owned the portable door. As a result, Wells reclaimed his control over the portal door and trapped the two in the dark space, where Wells' father was also imprisoned. It's then revealed that years ago, Wells lured his father, Wells Sr., to this place using a baby dragon, taking the opportunity to replace his father and take over the company. Paul recalled Wells' previous words that he had signed a sole contract with his father, which would allow Wells Sr. to control his son. So Paul wondered why they didn't just release everyone by controlling Wells through his sole contract. However, Wells Sr. explained that it wasn't that simple. He needed to deposit the sole contract in the Bank of the Dead for it to take effect. Paul was determined to find the exit, but there were doors everywhere. Wells Sr. said he had tried for several years, and almost all doors led to emptiness. However, Paul possessed the superpower to figure out the location of an object, so he decided to give it a try. After Paul's relentless efforts, he finally found the exit. Wells Sr. was overjoyed to regain his freedom and asked Paul to take the contract to the bank while he went to confront his evil son. The father and son, both as the top wizards, began their fierce battle upon meeting. Meanwhile, Paul was pinned down by a group of goblins and couldn't escape. Seeing this, Selfie used telepathy to contact the superior and begged for help. However, the goblins charged at them the next second. Paul was driven by his desire to save Suffy and managed to fence off the goblins, but was caught in a net. At that moment, the receptionist arrived with a stapler, shouting Wells Sr.'s name and threw the device to him. Wells Sr. used magic to hit the stapler, revealing the trapped goblin inside. The receptionist also revealed her true form, a goblin, and embraced the other goblin. It turned out they were a goblin couple, and Beardy was their son. While the family reunion was touching, Wells took the opportunity to launch a surprise attack on his father and trapped him. Soon after, the superior and the company elders arrived at the scene, trying to stop Wells from creating more chaos. However, he not only ignored them, but also controlled Sophie, forcing Paul to hand over the sole contract. Sophie secretly communicated with Paul, guessing that he could easily find the portal doors, possibly because he was their creator. So Paul reached out his hand to try, and several doors appeared in front of him. He summoned one of them under his feet and jumped into the death bank in order to make the sole contract take effect. There, Paul handed Wells' sole contract to a bank employee and said he wanted to make a trade. The employee immediately retrieved the signer's soul and the next second, Wells' powers disappeared, which allowed Wells Sr. to trap his evil son with magic and Suffy took the towel to open the portable door. Together, they locked Wells in a dark space as his punishment. After that, Wells Sr. tore off the towel's usage instructions, saying that the door would never open again. Then Paul returned to reality, holding Sophie's sole contract that he retrieved from the death bank. They happily embrace each other, and the film ends there, without showing the price that Paul had to pay to retrieve Sophie's soul. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.